So happy Father's Day, even to your mothers and to those people who may not have ever been parents. I wanted to uh, just put that out to you because today is Father's Day, and if you're not one, you have one, whether or not he's still alive. So uh, if there is somebody that you could reach out to and wish a happy Father's Day, I would encourage you to do that. Um, if we just happen to be in the passage in John where Jesus talks about his relationship with his father, and in this I found, well, the father's heart in God. And we, as we see how God relates to his son, Jesus Christ, in it I also see a model for me as a father and how I should relate to my children, and uh, there's a lot of conviction that happened with that, but also there's a sense in which God deals with me and with you as his children, because we are adopted into his family. Now this is an interesting picture, and I, I want to leave it up here just for a moment for you to see, because there's a lot of detail in it that shows what God is like in his nature. And we talk about the Trinity, and we don't really quite understand how that works. And I've used the analogy of the Son in the past, where uh, God the Father is the, you know, the kind of like the mass of gas there in the Son. The, uh, the Son is what you see of it, which is burning, and the Holy Spirit would be like the heat that we feel, and that uh, radiates to us. Um, that's not a perfect picture. And the reason it's not perfect is because the Trinity isn't only relating to us, it's relating to himself and to the idea of having three different persons all having the same nature and those nature being something that, that we in our minds perceive as not having room for more than one. It makes it tough, but I think what I see is everything emanating from God the Father. And God the Father, through his Holy Spirit, conceived the Son. Now, he did this in eternity. And I'm not sure how that happened. Because, according to our creeds, the Holy Spirit came from both the Father and the Son. There's a three-way interconnectedness where the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are all God... But the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is neither of the two. But we see in this passage how Jesus Christ is able to do the will of the Father, even though he was a man on earth. And I look at my children, and I think, well, why is it I can't get them to do my will? Well, <laughs> part of the problem is, there isn't an interconnectedness where they can feel and sense what my heart is, but also, even if I tell them what I want them to do, there's this little nasty thing in each person's heart called sin, and that sin gets in the way and prevents them from doing what I ask them to do. So that, that, that's my explanation of why the blender is still dirty. You know, <laughs> and why the room doesn't get cleaned, and, and maybe the, the, the lawn doesn't get weeded the way it's supposed to. It's because people, you know, we tend to uh, take pride in our individualism. Whereas in Jesus Christ, he's taking pride in his submission to his Father. So th we kind of see that in this picture. Anyway, God shows us a certain love language in this particular passage, and we can see how he relates to his son, how the son relates to the father, and how we may be able to teach and relate to each other, especially our own children. First of all, I see that God the father is a teacher. When Jesus Christ came to the earth, he grew in wisdom. He grew in stature. He grew in favor with God, and he grew in favor with men. That's found in Luke 2, 42. And so the passage there indicates that Jesus Christ, even though he was fully God, he also was fully man. And so he grew in different aspects. And so we see growth happening even in this passage. If we look closely, look at verse 19 in chapter 5 of John. Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, 
The Son can do nothing by himself but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Father, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these, that you may marvel. So Jesus hasn't seen it all yet. He's walking the earth. He's only been in ministry a few months. He's starting to do things. He turned water into wine, right? He healed somebody from afar. And then this time around, he healed somebody on the Sabbath who had been, uh, well, we don't know if he was lame or exactly what his problem was, but for 38 years he had an issue. And so now he's being confronted because he did it on the Sabbath. Well, when I went fishing with Gary a couple of weeks ago, he caught this catfish and we it was too big for his bucket. And so Gary just kind of threw the fish into the bucket head first. And I commented, well, that wasn't very comfortable for him. And Gary's response was, that's the least of his problems. <laughs> right? <laughs> and it was. And so the, in the same way, the Pharisees, no, they were upset because Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Well, Jesus is about to reply, well, that's the least of your problems. Right? Because now he's telling them, I'm God, in, a, in essence. And they have a real problem with that. So, uh, but that, so I see that happening. But I also see that a, a way that I could more effectively interact with my own kids. And you might want to think about this as well. Norman Rockwell oftentimes would would draw and paint old time Americana as he thinks it should have been. And so in, in some of those pictures, you oftentimes see children mimicking their parents. They might be dressed up in, in their mommy's dress, and wearing her mommy's shoes. The, uh, the boy might be wearing his dad's suit. Uh, the dad might be building something, and the boy has his little toy tools out next to him. That's kind of what I see happening, even in this picture here, of Jesus doing what the Father shows him to do. The Father, of course, is holding all the universe together. And Jesus Christ, in his little microcosm, has come to earth. And he's walking around in this little space about 20 miles radius. And he's doing the will of God. And he's doing what God shows him to do. And so God, the Father, is in fact a teacher. And Jesus, the Son, was in fact a student. And he was learning. He was a perfect student because he didn't have sin. And also, because he didn't have sin and he had the Holy Spirit within him, there was nothing to stop him from doing exactly what God the Father wanted him to do. Second, that piece that I see in God's love language is that he associates with his son. That's my boy. We first saw this on the Mount of Transfiguration where he said, this is my beloved son, hear him. It also happened when Jesus was baptized, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. But here we see in verse 22, for the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son, that all should honor the son just as they honor the father. He who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. So when we say, that's my boy, we're really proud of him. Because he's got the same last name, first of all. But second of all, he's starting to reflect the nature that we've been trying to teach all of these years. And so we build into a son or a daughter, and uh, these children start to do the things that we would expect them to do. They begin to act responsibly. They begin to make good decisions. They, they're choosing who their friends are going to be. They're starting to think about what their future life is going to be like. And yes, we're concerned about whether or not they're able to support themselves, but more importantly, we're concerned about their character. Because if they are living in an honorable way, it reflects positively on us. On the other hand, if you've got a fool for a son or a daughter, well, that kind of reflects negatively on us, doesn't it? Well, God the Father is basically saying, this is me. This is a reflection of me right here on earth. And the Son is saying, I am the ambassador. I am 
the reflection of God the Father. If you have seen me, you've seen the Father. If you honor me, you've honored the Father. And later on in John, we're going to hear nobody can even get to God unless they come through Jesus Christ. So we're beginning to see Jesus talking in that way. So early on in his ministry, he already is presenting himself as, in fact, God incarnate. There's a clear association there between God the Father and God the Son, in much the same way that there's a clear association between, well, I've got Ian standing there, or sitting there, and he's my son, and uh, I'm proud of him, and he does what I ask him to do, and he's a good son, and I appreciate that. All of my children are good. None of them have ended up in any kind of a situation that I would be ashamed of. And I'm proud of them. I, I'm concerned about their future, but not on their behalf, because this world is a tough world. And think they're seeing things that I never imagined they would ever have to see. So I pray for them, and I try to help them through to make some good decisions, but they've got character. And so I have no problem associating with them in that way. 